Today I have a 2003 F-350 that will start sometimes, and then if it starts, it'll run really rough and then stall, and it does not want to start until like the next day or so. And it's they're rare to get, but when you get one, it'll it'll actually be a stumper because it's pretty hard to catch. Or if you have not had it or heard about it, it it's actually really hard to find the problem. I only get like one or two a year. So I want to go through some of the basics and what to look for and how to catch this one. So again, it's it'll start, it'll crank, and it, uh, some of them will not start at all, or some may start, run good, and then slowly lose the cylinders, and they lose one side. So you either lose all your odd or all, all your even cylinders. That's a, one of the hints that clues you in. But everything is right on it. So I'm going to go ahead and start the diagnosis one, show us some of the different things we look for, and, and how to find the problem with this one. Of course we do the basics. At least look at the fuel gauge. It shows that it has some fuel in there. So we'll assume that for right now that it has fuel. We're going to also check the oil, make sure the oil change is done recently. Remove the fuel cap and check for the gasoline smell. Because it's definitely, if there's gasoline's ever been in there, you can check it. So just open the cap up, smell it, and um, you know, check it, smell it right away, and you can tell there's gasoline inside there. Just put your nose down in there and check it. Make sure there's no gasoline in the diesel fuel. You want to listen to the pre-clatter of the injectors. You want to make sure they're nice and consistent and solid. What I mean by that, solid all the way through, you want to hear the of all of them hitting if it sounds spotty then you either have a bad ficum or sticking injectors. When it's cold, you can, you can hear when the injectors are sticking, or if it does it all the time, then that's usually a bad ficum, because the ficum normally takes out four at a time to each side. The, um, it can take out one, but then it's normally two each side, two odds, two evens when it's a bad ficum. So I'm gonna do the sound so you know what a good one sounds like. That was all eight hitting, it sounded pretty good. Okay, you also want to check your fuel pressure if you suspect it. I got that fuel cap from New England Performance Part. It's a pretty nice cap there, you can you leave it on there. It already comes tapped out for that. I just had to put in my uh, quick disconnect so I can connect my fuel line on and off of there. So we have the, the cap there, we have the fuel gauge. Let's go ahead and turn the key on and watch it rise. Okay, the fuel pressure is rising. This is normally to run for about 10 seconds. And once the fuel pump shuts off, the pressure would drop back down. That's normal. It's still on. There, you can hear it went off. And then also the pressure is dropping down. That's normal. That's typical of what you to expect. So we have fuel pressure. At least we have base fuel pressure. Again, just remember, we're trying to diagnose a crank no start, not a performance issue. So now we're going to crank this one, and we're going to watch ICP and IPR. And I'm also going to switch to cylinder contribution, because that's what's important, and that's what this one's going to actually act up. So I'm going to crank it. You see everything looks good. I'm going to ignore it for a second, because I need to catch this. Iling good. We're missing on number one. It actually seems good. It's idling okay. And as you can see, number seven is starting to fade out. Remember, we have the odd side and the even side. I always remember the passenger is odd, so you have one, three, five, seven on the passenger side and two, four, six, eight on the drivers. You see seven's getting worse, but one's still our main problem. Just let this idle for a second. What's actually happening, or what's going to happen here in a second, I suspect the number one injector is allowing the compression to come in and pushing the fuel back on that side. So slowly we'll see number one drop, I mean number one's already dropped, we're going to lose seven, we're going to lose three, and we're going to lose number five, and then, it'll, then it will become a no start, but it's because the compression slowly works into this cylinder. 
If it was real bad, I can show you the balloon test or looking for air in the cylinders. But this one's not so bad that it's that it's uh, that we're seeing the air come into it or the compression coming back into the fuel system. So I can't catch it that way. This one we actually just catch by watching it die and what cylinders we lose. Okay, there we go. We're starting to lose three. It's running worse. A lot of times too, when you see this, it, it's if they've just been worked on. What I mean by just is within 2,000 miles. Somebody's worked on the injectors and not used the torque wrench. It'll it'll do this. Then that the crushed sleeve, the sealing washer that's against the head or against the injector cup is failing and allowing the compression to come up. So quiz the customer or yourself. You know you've been working on it or somebody's worked on it. Then you have. Uh, then you know that you just have to go in and replace the seals and use a torque wrench on the injectors. Make sure you torque them down to like 26 foot pounds and also make sure you have the right hold down on there and that you have the right, the, uh, uh, that, the, that the threads and everything were clean too before you start it. So anyhow, now we have number one out, number three out, number five out. It's going to lose number seven. Let's see if I can rev it up and hurry this along. There we go. Now we have one, five, three, and seven, and the engine barely running. This is what it's doing. And here's your cylinder contribution. You got the whole odd side out. Remember now, when Pickums do this, they usually take out two per side. Okay, I still have to work on this thing today, so I don't want to get it too hot until it becomes a no start. But as you see, you can tell each cylinder dropping out there. Um, so now we know they have a problem with this bank. So I'm going to go ahead and go after this, take this valve cover off, and go actually go after number one injector. Because I normally what I try to do is go after the one that's out. Yes, it could be number seven pushing it back or any one on this side, but I've actually found that. When it's the first one that I see drop out, it's usually the culprit, the one that's causing it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull off the passenger side valve cover and go after this injector. With this being the O3 style, the best tool that I found to get the bolts off the bottom of the oil rail up there is this snap on flex ratchet, quarter inch drive, and their half deep 8 millimeter socket. It fits perfectly right up here, right inside here, to get to these bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the oil rail to get the injector out. Okay, I've got the bolts out of the oil rail. Now we're gonna remove this quick disconnect. If you wanna get the proper tool, you can get it from freedomracing.com, and this is what it looks like to get the, the tool to do it, and it just goes in right underneath here. But if you're in a bind and you don't have it, or you, you're at home and you don't wanna buy these special tools, this is actually just a cheap uh, wrench that comes with your air tools, and it's the same thing. You can put it on that side, and the other side is the other um, size that you need. When the injectors come out, you want it to look like this one here. This is a good injector that everything was sealing and it's working good as far as the, the seals didn't fail. This cavity right here is where your fuel's at and the oil pressure comes down from the side here and pushes the fuel through. But if you have both seals here, then everything was good. This crushed sleeve or the sealing washer down here was sealing against the head in the injector cup actually and it was all working good everything was right this injector was either not torqued properly or not sealed properly so the washer the sealing washer is gone it eroded or failed it's again it could be because of torque under torque over torque and the bolt broke or just not there wasn't the proper hold down which i'll cover in a second but then this lower ring o-ring right here failed and the compression would come up and get inside here and push the fuel back so if you see the injector comes out like this, you know you found the right one. And it does not necessarily have to look like this because I've seen the injector's tips fail or it, uh, have problems in the fuel, the combustion can get inside, the compression will get inside and also push the fuel back. But this is the most common. 
So a couple things I can recommend is always torque them, 26 foot pounds. And also a few things I want to go over here. This is for the early style heads, like the 2003, 04, and even the early 05. They, they, it'll use this type with the square. And then the 05 and up, but I don't know the production date. And also you can't always count on that because you don't know which heads the vehicle has on it. If somebody put new heads on it in 06, it may require that you use this injector hold down. So you can't always go by that. But what I can tell you is when you're torquing it, if you feel a lot of resistance or it's not feels like it's not seating properly or fighting you, you may have the wrong fork. You know, of course, pull it out, look at your threads, but if everything seems good, it's actually two different forks for two different heads. This one has a Torx 40 and this one has a Torx 45. The newer one's a larger size. A couple other things to cover. If you end up where the, uh, the where your injector cup was damaged from this, from the heat, you can put it back together and chance it, but the proper way is to use this brush, get down inside the cup and clean it. And here's the part number of it. That's the Ford part number. And one other thing to cover, sometimes you can tell if it has the newer style heads because the rocker carrier the rocker carrier will not have all the bolts in it. You know, you have the regular head bolts that clamp it down here, but externally they, they all have bolts here. The older ones will have every bolt in it there and also on the inside, but the, uh, the newer ones won't. Some only have two up here and some won't use any of them. So sometimes if you look at your rocker carrier here and you see it and it's, it's different or it's missing bolts, odds are you might have the new style heads on it. Sorry, I can't tell you exactly on that, but I don't know either. If somebody knows, post it down here on the bottom in the comment section. Self a favor and use a torque wrench on it. It may just save you a tow bill later. Just, it torques down to 26 foot pounds. When you're putting the oil rail back on, make sure that the coupler's on. Tug on it a few times, make sure it doesn't come off. Otherwise, you're going to be moving your valve cover. And when you set the rail down, push it straight. If you try to work it in at an angle, say down here and work it in, that's how the injector seals get damaged. So set it on flat and then push it down and make sure you draw it down evenly. Otherwise you may be doing the injectors here pretty quick. Okay, for right now I just did number one injector and what I want to show is once you've had that oil rail off, you're going to have a long crank and we'll see the IPR and everything slowly build. Being an 03, it starts and builds pressure faster than the 04 and 05 or the 04 and up ones do just because the oil rail design so let's go ahead and start this one Got it started there, and let's go back and look at the cylinder contribution. See if it's coming up. Sometimes it takes a while to get the air out of the system. Cycle the key a few times to get the uh, some diesel fuel. I'm letting the fuel pump run here. Okay, I've got a few key cycles in here. Sometimes you have to cycle that key multiple times to purge the air, and I've had a few that had so much air in them, especially from a problem like this that you have to go out and loosen the fuel cap on it to get all the air out of the system. But anyhow, now we have the key off. And it does sound good, it's running a lot smoother. Now one of the things that I strongly suggest is that if you have this problem, 
do all four on that bank if the customer has the cash or if it's your own and you don't want to come back do the whole bank because the other three that were losing the fuel they, they, when there's air in the system like that the injectors have a tendency to fail so I strongly suggest doing all four or at least giving the customer the option of doing all four so that way you don't end up getting a comeback or a hard start cold or some other issue going on so another thing I want to show you here is what out with the engine just because I wasn't sure how this one was going to turn out if I end up if I'm going to end up having to do the other injectors and I still may it needs to have the road test and be stressed to see what's going on just put the, uh, the oil rail on start it up here put the bolts in it that way I can see if I had to pull back apart again So anyhow, this one seemed to be solved with just doing the number one injector. Hopefully that helps you out how to diagnose some of these problem child ones. Because there's nothing in the textbook that would have told you how to go about this no flow chart. That will tell you to look for the injectors pushing the fuel back. The balloon test would not have caught it. Um, none of the air is leaking out. It's not that bad. You actually need the experience and to see the cylinders dropping out to catch this one. So hopefully that helps you out. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.